turns out the former leader does not snap his fingers and command a nationwide crippling uprising in his or her name. I mean, even in our country, where he promised he would, where he promised that would happen, where he overtly publicly tried to make it happen, it failed. He failed. He wanted that. He promised it. He was counting on it. And therefore, a lot of the country was counting on that being a consequence of this part of the process. It hasn't happened. The dog did not bark. And so that does sort of settle one big part of this, this existential question for us at this crime scene. Right, this, this existential question for our country and our democracy, for our form of government, will we be able to survive bringing criminal charges against this particular alleged criminal, given his political power and his hold on his followers? Will we be able to try a man for his alleged crimes without riots in the streets, without the threat of civil war? Turns out, yes, yes, we can despite what he threatened to do, despite what he promised to do. He tried to do it. He could not pull it off, which is good news for our democracy. The bad news is that instead we're getting something else, not mass violence again, like we saw on January 6th, not even mass protest, but instead what we are getting is individual acts, both violence and threats of violence by radicalized people and groups that support him. We saw it last year when a man who was enraged by the Mar-a-Lago search warrant shot his way into an Ohio FBI office and was then killed in a shootout outside Cincinnati. We saw it a week and a half ago when another armed man was shot and killed by the FBI, this time in Utah, when they served an, a, a search warrant and arrest warrant on him in response to his threats to kill President Biden and also New York prosecutor Alvin Bragg, who had brought the first indictment against Donald Trump. Then last week, a Massachusetts man pled guilty in federal court that, to, that, that after the election, he, he sent bomb threats, death threats to this Arizona official to Katie Hobbs, who was then the Democratic Secretary of State in Arizona and who is now the Democratic Governor of Arizona. That man pled guilty in federal court last week. He will be facing five years in prison when he is sentenced this fall. Then it was Alvin, Texas, last week, a woman arrested for phoning in a death threat to the chambers of the federal judge who is overseeing the other federal case against Trump in federal district court in Washington. The woman admitted threatening to kill the judge and then also volunteered another death threat to federal agents, saying she would also kill Texas Democratic Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. She reportedly told agents she did not intend to go to Washington, D.C. to carry out her death threat against the judge, although she did make the threat. But she told them she absolutely would kill Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee when Sheila Jackson Lee came home to Texas. Then it was a weird, attenuated story, sort of announcement out of Reno, Nevada on Friday. Hazmat teams and robots called in to respond to a cup of white powder and a threatening sign left outside the Reno, Nevada FBI office. And of course, it's all the news from Fulton County, Georgia, where pro-Trump online message boards started immediately after his indictment there, circulating names and purported addresses and phone numbers and photos of the grand jurors who handed down the Trump indictment in Georgia, prompting the Fulton County Sheriff's Office to announce that it was investigating threats made to the grand jurors. That soon gave way to the news that the FBI would be joining the Sheriff's Department investigation of those threats to the grand jurors. Soon gave way to news that the sheriff himself was being threatened and that that was now under investigation, which soon gave news to soon gave way to news that security had also had to be increased around prosecutor Fonnie Willis and her office because of threats to her. Now, tonight, CNN reporting that employees of the Fulton County Sheriff's Office are themselves being threatened, including their homes and their families being threatened by Trump supporters. Tonight, they've announced a total lockdown on the streets around the Fulton County Jail for when former President Trump turns up there this week to surrender himself and get booked, which he says will happen on Thursday. But honestly, at this point, do we really expect big street protests on behalf of Trump? I think we don't. I think we don't expect that. I think that dog has not barked. 
We don't expect big street protests on his behalf. We expect terrorism, or at least terroristic threats, like the ones that have been breaking out all over the country now, like heat rash. And so what do we do with that as a country? I mean, it's a, it's a wild context in which to be pursuing politics, but we are, and we must. The first Republican presidential debate is day after tomorrow. It's on Wednesday. Trump is arguing that he is such a prohibitive favorite for the Republican presidential nomination, he should not bother with debating. And maybe that's true. Uh, the NBC Des Moines Register Mediacom poll that's out today puts Trump up 23 points over his nearest rival in the key early state of Iowa. That's basically unchanged from the 24 points he was up in Iowa in the last big poll there, which was late last month. But at the same time, in that, in that Iowa poll that's out today, the number of likely Republican caucus goers in Iowa who say that Trump has committed serious crimes is over 25 percent. The number of likely Republican caucus goers who say they have an unfavorable view of him is one in three. It's 33 percent. And when it comes to the question of whether or not Trump should be leading the Republican Party, look at this. Well over 50 percent of likely Republican caucus goers in Iowa say either that Trump was a good president, but it's time to consider new leaders, or that the party just needs a new leader, one with better personal behavior and a different approach. You put that together, that's 57 percent of people who are planning on going to the Iowa Republican caucuses, 57 percent who say they want someone other than Trump to be leading their party. 57 percent don't want him leading their party, while no other candidate gets within 20 percent of him in the same poll. <laughs> I mean, what are Republicans doing here? How do you feel about this guy? What do you plan on doing about it?